going on guys, Arax here and welcome to my very first weapon workshop for Monster Hunter World. For those of you that are new, this is my weapon tutorial series for Monster Hunter, where I go over absolutely everything you could possibly want to know about a given weapon, right from the basic moves available to you, all the way up to the main, most efficient combos you should be using, and some overarching weapon theory. If there's a weapon you really want to pick up but want to know a little bit more about, then look no further. Over the course of the next few weeks, I'll be putting together guides for each of the 14 weapons in Monster Hunter World, and today we're kicking things off with the Charge Blade. The Charge Blade is, without a doubt, the most technical weapon in Monster Hunter. It is both a sword and shield and an axe. It'll have you managing and charging files, which can then be used to boost not only your defensive capabilities, but also your attack power for select attacks too. The sword and shield portion of the weapon offers mobility and great defensive options, meanwhile the axe portion offers great damage potential and high reaching attacks for hard to reach places like tails or wings, and depending on the type of charge blade you have, it can even KO monsters too. In other words, it is like a Swiss army knife, it can do it all. It is a fantastic weapon, my personal favourite, and while yes it is more complex than most of the other offerings, with a little understanding it's really not that difficult to get your head around. So let's begin with the basics. First up, let's go over some of the weapon concepts, and then we'll get onto the moves. This is the sword and shield mode. When drawing your weapon, by default, this is where you'll end up. Any attacks you perform whilst in this mode will begin to charge your files up here. First they go yellow, then they go red, and if you continue to attack while in red, they'll eventually go bright red, and then your attacks will start to bounce. This is bad. So generally speaking, you attack till you see red, and you then store your files, or charge your files, that's the official term. I'll go over how you do this in just a second. With the files charged, you can either switch to axe mode and use some of these files during some of your axe attacks. You can transfer the files into your shield to boost your shield's defense, as well as your attack power in axe mode, after which point you're then free to charge more files. And you can even expend the whole lot in a rather powerful move known as the Super Amped Element Discharge. There's a little bit more to it than that, and we'll get into the finer details in a moment, but as the general weapon flow goes, that is essentially how it works. Attack in sword and shield mode to charge your files, transfer those to your shield, charge more files, switch to axe mode to take advantage of said files, and switch back as and when you need to replenish. That being said, sword and shield mode can also be used to dish out the damage, and you will use this a lot of the time when you need to be more mobile. But when an opening presents itself, like a monster getting knocked down or trapped, then it's worth your time to dip into the damage offered by axe mode. So, now let's go over the moves. Starting off in Sword and Shield mode, pressing triangle performs your bog standard slash, and you can press triangle three times for the basic combo. Weak slash, return stroke, and spinning slash. That final move, the spinning slash, is important, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. Holding down circle will perform the charged double slash. This is going to be one of your core moves when it comes to charging your files. Just be sure you don't hold it down too long. If you do, it'll come out like this, a much weaker hit. You can also press triangle at the end of this to add a spinning slash, and since spinning slash is the most powerful hit of the triangle combo, that's not actually a bad option. You can also work the charge double slash into the triangle combo by holding circle at any point. Following any attack in sword and shield mode, if you push a direction and press circle, you can perform the new sliding slash move. This can be used to reposition, close the gap, or get away should you need to. You can also go into your regular combos following a sliding slash, so think of it as a way to move and then continue. Pressing triangle plus circle together, when neutral, will perform the forward slash. This is a great opener since it moves you forward and it also does more damage than your first hit in your basic triangle combo, so you can use this to open a lot of your combos whilst also closing the gap between you and the monster. However, if you press triangle plus circle after any attack, it'll instead do a shield thrust. This move serves two main purposes. Paired with the charge double slash, this is your main and fastest file building combo. Hold circle, followed by triangle plus circle. If you want to charge your files fast, you can loop this combo until red, and once your files are ready to store, holding down R2, which is guard, and pressing circle will store them like so. R2 on its own is block, so if you need to block an incoming attack at any point, then this is an available option to you. By default, your shield is pretty strong, but when it's charged, it'll be considerably stronger and provide you with much greater defense. So let's go over charging the shield really quickly. If you press triangle plus circle three times consecutively, you'll go from a forward slash into a shield thrust and then into an amped element discharge. This will morph into axe mode for a powerful attack and you'll then morph back into sword and shield mode at the end. If you have the file stored following the initial axe attack, you will then dish out additional file damage on top, so this is always best used with files. However, if you then follow the third triangle circle input with an R2, 
You'll instead cancel the Amped Element Discharge, return to Sword and Shield mode, and you'll notice that any files you had stored have now moved into the shield. The shield icon now glows red, your actual shield glows red, and now you have some interesting bonuses to consider. Number one, your defense is much stronger when guarding. Number two, your axe attacks are more powerful. And number three, that shield thrust I mentioned earlier, performing that attack now dishes out small amounts of file damage on top. You can also dish out file damage following a guard point, but we'll speak more about them a little bit later in this video, since that's a bit more advanced. And assuming you transferred a full five files into your shield, then the shield charge will last you two and a half minutes. At this point, you're then free to build yet more files, and this is where things get interesting. First things first, the condensed element slash. With a charged shield and a set of files ready to charge, if you hold down R2 and press circle, then hold triangle during this animation, you will do this. When your shield locks in, let go, and you'll perform an overhead slash, and now your sword is charged. Make sure you let go when the shield locks in and don't hold it too long, otherwise it'll overcharge and you won't get the charged sword. But with this in place, your sword attacks will also dish out small amounts of file damage relevant to the type of charge blade you have, and you also have natural mind's eye, meaning your sword attacks won't bounce. And this charged effect will last 45 seconds. However, the sword charge is optional. If things get hectic in combat, you're much better off quickly storing the files using the standard R2 plus circle and then going from there. After all, having charged files and a charged shield opens you up to the most powerful move for the charge blade, the super amped element discharge. The combo we did a moment ago, three consecutive triangle plus circle inputs, if you do that now that your shield is charged and your files are full, you will do this. Not only is it a powerful hit, but it also has a shockwave that follows up too. If it's an impact type charge blade, this is an impact wave. And if it's elemental, then it's relevant to the elements. This does consume all your files, so keep that in mind. And it's also got a pretty long reach, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you set yourself up correctly to avoid missing with this. Typically, you wanna use this when you know that for sure you have an opening. The monster is down, trapped, sleeping, something like that. If you decide you don't want to do this, you can cancel it into the regular Amped Element Discharge, which only consumes one file at a time. If you want to do this, then during the wind-up animation, pull back and press X, and you'll then cancel into the standard version of this attack. Note that when I say back, it is relevant to where your character is facing, not your camera, so if you were facing sideways, back would be to the side. So in summary, attack in sword and shield mode to build files, store these files, transfer them into the shield, build more files, store those files and your sword if there's time, and now you have access to the super amped element discharge should you want to, otherwise you can cancel into the regular amped element discharge. If you want to be super efficient after storing the files, you can charge some more so that you can then go straight from a shield transfer into storing, so it is one seamless motion. But, now that you have an understanding of sword and shield mode, let's talk axe. Holding down R2 to guard and pressing triangle will morph into axe mode, and whilst in axe mode, pressing R2 will morph back. You can also draw directly into axe mode with your weapon sheath simply by pressing R2, and if you press circle after storing your files, so R2 and circle, you can also transition straight into axe mode, although this last one will consume one file in the process if you have them stored. Now axe mode is much more straightforward, you can press triangle twice to perform a rising slash followed by an overhead slash. This can be looped infinitely, but this is also a high reaching attack so it's great for hitting tails, wings or generally hard to reach parts on the monster. Pushing forward and pressing triangle perform the dash slam which is an overhead chop. You can then press circle three times to perform the element discharge one, element discharge two and then go straight into the amped element discharge. The same move you performed from sword and shield can also be done at the end of the circle axe combo, but the sword and shield one is the fastest route, hence why it's often referred to as the super shortcut. However, sometimes you don't want to go into the element discharge, so you can sneak a triangle attack in as the third hit instead, and you can loop back around. Now, something else important to understand about axe mode is that if you have files stored, your circle attacks will consume these files and dish out additional file damage. Each individual attack in the full circle combo consumes one, but you'll notice that the second hit does a double swipe at the cost of one. So this is a very valuable move, especially with an impact style charge blade. A quick note on impact is that impact damage dealt to a monster's head is KO damage. Rack up enough of this and you can knock out a monster. So the charged shield thrust, the charged sword, the amped element discharge, or the super amped element discharge, and now these sweeping attacks. All of these, if you have files, can dish out impact damage, and this move in particular is very effective at KOing monsters. That and of course the super amped element discharge. So being able to take advantage of this second hit is especially useful. Something I do a lot if I have an opening is morph from sword and shield mode into axe, 
and then following the morph slash if you press circle straight away you'll cut right into the second hit in the circle combo giving you the double swipe at the cost of one file and following that you can then just press r2 to go back into sword and shield mode to make you more mobile also whilst in axe mode if you press triangle and circle together you'll initiate the amped element discharge or the super if your shield is charged so there's a number of ways to get to this i typically use this one if i'm setting up an ultra on a sleeping monster with a fully charged shield and full files, paired with the fact that striking a sleeping monster does double damage, this is a great way to wake it up. Of course, just like in sword and shield mode, you can initiate the amped element discharge and press R2 to cancel, which will once again transfer any leftover files you have into your shield. So, that's the axe. A few simple moves, but a great damage dealer. You move slower in axe mode than sword and shield, so I tend to dip into this when I know I have an opening. Next up, let's talk about jumping and slide attacks. When sliding down a hill, if you press triangle, triangle, you'll draw into a rising slash followed by a jumping slash. Any attacks performed in the air counts as mounting damage, so this can be used to mount the monster. Alternatively, with your weapon drawn, pressing triangle plus circle to perform the forward slash down a hill will initiate a slide, after which you can press triangle, triangle again. You can also sub out the final triangle hit for an R2 input instead if you want to morph into axe mode. Jumping off a ledge and pressing triangle does a jumping slash, and jumping off a ledge and pressing R2 does the jumping slash into axe. If you press triangle plus circle to do the forward slash towards one of those runnable walls like the mushrooms or the vines in the wild spire waste, you'll run up and do a jumping slash, and if you do that and press R2 on top, you can then instead go into the jumping morph slash. So those are the basics. Those are all the moves for sword and shield, axe mode, and the various aerial and sliding options. So now let's talk about something a little bit more advanced, guard points. You have a shield and you can block with said shield, but when you get good with this weapon, you can also use guard points. A guard point is a moment during an attack animation where your shield is presented in front of you. Take this as an example. When pressing R2 and triangle to morph into axe mode, you slide the sword into the shield and for a brief moment, that shield is out in front of you. If you are hit during this moment, you'll block, and this is known as a guard point. If you perform a guard with a charged shield, you'll dish out some file damage in the process. So, if you have an impact style charge blade, it is indeed possible to KO a monster simply through guard points. The R2 plus triangle guard point is the simplest, it's quick, and it can become second nature in time. You'll get to the point where instead of just pressing R2 to guard, you'll instead press R2 and triangle to guard points. However, that's not the only one. When in axe mode, pressing R2 morphs back into sword and shield mode, and again, your shield is presented at the end. This is out for a little bit longer, but it is a little bit harder to set up since the morph animation is longer, so I personally prefer to use the first one. At the end of the basic triangle sword and shield combo, you end in a spinning slash. I mentioned earlier that that was important, and this is why. Spinning slash also has a guard point, and so too does the new sliding slash. Again, those last ones can be a little hard to set up, and you'll likely pull them off by accident, more often than not, but they're still available to you. At this point, you're probably thinking, well, this sounds cool and flashy, but am I really going to risk it for a little bit of file damage? Well, there's more to it than that. Guard points not only have less knockback, but they also have some follow-up options too. And the most notable one is that you can go directly from a guard point into a super amped element discharge. Press triangle plus circle, following a guard point, and you'll go into this. Depending on the move the monster did, it'll often be left open after, so this is a great way to block and follow up for some good counter damage. You can also press triangle following a guard point to morph into axe mode, or you can just press X to evade out, it really depends. But this is a very valuable tool. It'll take a while to master, but if you pick a monster that is predictable like Baroth or Diablos and just practice, you'll get it. Now with that covered, that is everything you need to know on the moves front, right from the basic attacks all the way to guard points. However, as with any weapon, you'll typically focus on just a handful of those moves most of the time. So with that in mind, here are the best and most efficient combos you should be using for the charge blade. It's worth noting that for this section, it's not the standalone damage numbers that we're interested in per se, since these will vary based on your gear, your weapon, sharpness, and any other buffs you may have active at that time. What we are instead interested in is the overall damage output relative to your other moves. In other words, which ones dish out the most damage. When in sword and shield mode, your two main options are hold circle into triangle plus circle. This is a move you're going to be using a lot anyway because, as mentioned, it's your main file building combo, but luckily it's also one of the most damaging combos in sword and shield. It takes around 3.6 seconds to complete, and the only way you will top that in damage is if you sub out the shield thrust for the spinning slash, so hold circle, triangle. 
There's really not much in it, to be honest. This second combo is a fraction of a second quicker. And while it does deal a little bit more damage, it also moves you around a little bit more and isn't quite as quick to follow up if you're trying to loop it. So I typically default to hold circle, triangle plus circle. But either of those moves, whilst in sword and shield mode, are good for damage. As for axe mode, your triple circle combo is, without a doubt, your strongest move. With sword files and a charged shield, it'll go into the super amped element discharge, unless of course you opt to cancel it into the regular amped element discharge. However, it is also the lengthiest combo to pull off, and it's not something you always have the option to do. This is really for when the monster is down and you have a guaranteed opening. So, second to that in damage is to sub out the final hit for the triangle attack, doing circle, circle, triangle. This takes a little over 5 seconds to complete, and the damage output is pretty nice. The standard triangle axe combo is the weakest option, and as mentioned earlier, it's really more so used if you're trying to just hit a hard to reach part of the monster. If it's level with you, circle will always be the way to go. However, the other thing to factor in are your switching combos, when you go from sword and shield into axe mode and then back out. Obviously you have your shortcut to super amped element discharge, a great move you should always use if the opening presents itself, but when things are a little less certain, there are two main combos here. R2 plus triangle, circle R2, will draw into the overhead morph slash, perform the second double swiping attack in axe mode only consuming one file, and then end in the roundhouse slash back into sword of shield mode also with a guard point. This takes a little under 6 seconds to complete, so it's just under 1 second longer than the circle circle triangle combo in axe, but it deals considerably more damage. Alternatively, when storing files and pressing circle circle R2, you'll go into the element discharge 1, element discharge 2, and then end in the roundhouse slash, again with a guard point. This takes around 6 seconds to complete, so essentially the same time as the combo above, but it's not quite as powerful. So in summary, those three combos should be your bread and butter. Hold circle, triangle plus circle, when in sword and shield mode, three circle inputs when in axe mode only if the opening presents itself, and R2 plus triangle, circle R2, as your switching combo to keep you mobile. But that, my friends, is pretty much it. As I'm sure you can see now, the Charge Blade is an incredibly versatile weapon, offering high damage output, long reach for hard to reach areas, KO potential when running with an impact type blade, and defensive options when facing off against some of the more aggressive monsters. It's definitely a weapon you should consider checking out if you haven't done so already, because it's a hell of a lot of fun to use. Now for the time being, that's it. That was my very first weapon workshop for Monster Hunter World. Be sure to keep it locked because I'll be working my way through every single weapon over the next few weeks, but until then, Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then a like would be super appreciated. And take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.